Bill McColgan speaking to you from Briggs Stadium in Detroit, Michigan, where this afternoon the Browns and the Lions battle it out for the world supremacy of professional football. Both the Lions and the Browns are seeking to add luster to already glorious comebacks this year. The Lions, after winning the Western Division title in 1954, dropped all the way to the cellar in 55. A gallant effort to return to the top fell one game short just a year ago when they lost the division crown to the Chicago Bears. But this season, under their new head coach, George Wilson, the Lions made it all the way back, and they did it the hard way. In their last four games, they had to come up with victories over the Green Bay Packers, the Browns, the Chicago Bears, and the San Francisco 49ers. The Lions have definitely been a second-half football team over that span. In the second half of those four games, they have allowed a total of only 13 points while scoring 76 themselves. The Browns' comeback was of a different type. They won the championship in 1955, but fell to fourth place in the Eastern Division last year with a record of 5-7. and seven. The squad, which includes 12 rookies and five second-year men, beat the defending champion New York Giants 6-3 to three in the regular season opener, and that was the psychological lift they needed. Having beaten the champs, they felt they could go all the way. They were led by Tommy O'Connell, a quarterback who many said was too small to make the grade in the professional ranks. It was said that O'Connell didn't have the speed or, nor the maneuverability to cope with the present-day defenses in pro football. Well, Tommy answered those critics by leading the National Football League in passing as he sparked the Browns to the Eastern Division crown. Speaking of O'Connell, he suffered a severe ankle sprain in one of the final games of the year, this one against the Chicago Cardinals, when he was tackled from behind by Leo Sugar. O'Connell has not seen action since then, but he, of course, has been working out with the Browns for the past couple of weeks, and he has been nominated by head coach Paul Brown to start in this big football game this afternoon. Tommy, of course, during his collegiate days at the University of Illinois, was the Big Ten's top passer. The Browns and the Lions are no newcomers to the championship game. They have met no fewer than three times in the past six years. They battled it out at Municipal Stadium in Cleveland in 1952, Detroit winning that one by a score of 17-7. to Doak Walker, now retired, came up with a big play in that football game, a 67-yard touchdown run. The next year, the scene changed to here at Briggs Stadium in Detroit. That was 1953, when the Lions again defeated the Browns 17-16. to Lou Groza of the Browns kicked three field goals, and Chick Chigaty scored a touchdown for Cleveland, but the Lions won it in the final minute on a 33-yard pass play from Bobby Lane to Jim Doran. Back in Cleveland in 1954, Otto Graham was the big gun, running for three touchdowns, passing for the same number as the Browns defeated the Lions 56-10. to And here again this afternoon, it's the Browns and the Detroit Lions battling it out for the World Football Championship. It's a good day for football. The sun is shining here in Detroit. The temperature is 32 degrees and the wind 18 miles an hour from the west-southwest. The Cleveland Browns, in the toss about 15 minutes ago, won it, as Mike McCormick, their offensive captain, called it. And they'll receive the opening kickoff. They'll defend the north goal. Detroit will kick and will defend the south goal. It's my pleasure to introduce for the play-by-play in the first period and the starting lineups, Ray Scott. Thank you very much, Bill McCoggan. And good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen, wherever you are. And welcome, by way of NBC Radio, to this professional world championship game. Jim Martin comes to the ball. His boot is high. Sails deep and far over the end line. It'll be an automatic touchback. First down and ten. The Cleveland Browns will put the ball in play. The right end is Preston Carpenter. And the left end split is Brewster. And O'Connell fades the pass on the first play. Throws deep and out to the left. And Brewster has it at the sidelines. And is bellowed out of bounds immediately. After a gain of 17 yards. To... O'Connell under center. The snap. Pitch going to the left side. And swinging in outside of end. And bellowed out of bounds at the 43-yard line is Jimmy Brown. It'll find Kenny Cons punting from the Cleveland 31. The pass from center is true. The kick is a wobbly one off to the right. 
Barr watches it land at the 25, rolls back to the 20. He picks it up and is downed immediately at the 10-yard line. He was driven back from the 11, is where the ball will be placed, as Terry Barr elected to handle that punt with three Browns standing by. Second down, 11. Put out to the left is Jim Doran. Again, it is Gedman off left tackle. He finds a big hole, comes to the 15, to the 20, and spins to the 20 and a half. Don Paul in on the defensive play for Cleveland. Gene Gedman. The snap and rope fades to pass. He looks. He throws over the middle. And it is complete at the Brown 40-yard line to right end Steve Junker. Second down, nine. Rope fades to pass on second down, nine. He hits his man at the 26-yard line door, and he falls forward to the 25 as he's tackled. Tobin Road under center. No score in the game. First quarter. A fake to Johnson and Getman on a trap play over the right side. Comes up to the 22-yard line, and there he's thrown back very hard by four Cleveland Brown players. And again, Tobin Road has his right end tight, and Jim Doran split left about eight yards, and Rote fades to pass on second down seven. He throws deep for Cassidy. He's in the end zone. It is incomplete. Warren Lahr. And so now with fourth down at about seven, into the game comes Jim Martin. He will apparently attempt the field goal. The snap, the kick. It is good. The score, the Detroit Lions three, the Cleveland Browns nothing. For first and lead three to nothing at the midway point of the first period. The whistle with Campbell and Brown deep to receive. Jimmy Brown in the end zone, takes it five yards deep and decides to run it out. He comes up the left side to the five to the ten and he's spun under at the seventeen. Carpenter and Jimmy Brown. O'Connell fades to pass. Excellent protection. Throws out to the left side. Renfro has it at the 27-yard line. He's brought down immediately. The snap. Straight ahead goes Jimmy Brown. Across the 30, he has the first down with a couple of yards to spare. And Renfro is an inside flanker on the right side. And the running backs are wide apart as O'Connell fades to pass. He looks once. He throws. It is intercepted by Bob Long. He's at the 30. The Brown 25. He's at the 20-yard line. Second down, nine. Rote fades the pass. Now he runs up the middle. He's at the 15. He's at the 10. The 5. The 3. The 1-yard line. He's right down within a foot or so of that goal line. First down and goal to go on the 1. Rote sneaks into the end zone for the touchdown. Jim Martin comes into the game. He will attempt the extra point as the Lions now lead with four minutes of play unofficially remaining in the first period, 9 to nothing. Rote will hold. The snap. The ball is down. The kick is in the air. It is good. The point is good and the score now. The Detroit Lions 10, the Cleveland Browns nothing. If you're at the goal line, Martin comes to the ball. His kick is high and swings off to the right. Campbell comes up to it at the three-yard line, to the 10, to the left, 15, to the 20, to the 23-yard line. A fumble, the ball is loose. It is rolling back toward the goal line. It is recovered at the 15-yard line by Detroit. At the 14-yard line, Rote fades the pass. Looks right, looks left, over the middle, it is complete to the five, the junker, to the two, to the one. And he's swarmed under at about the two-yard line. Right over the middle, Steve Junker got loose. Road under center again, a mass defensive line. Straight ahead goes Getman. He is in there. Road holding, Martin tempting the conversion. The snap, the ball is down, the kick is in the air. It is good. And so now, the Detroit Lions lead the Cleveland Browns by a score of 17 to nothing. With a little better than a minute remaining in the first period, Martin comes to the ball. His boot is down the middle, and Reynolds at the four. Slips to one knee, gets up, comes to the 10, 15, 20, 22, and there he's hit by a very hard tackle. Brown and Carpenter at the running back positions, and fading to pass is O'Connell. He looks to the left, and he throws deep, intended for Brewster. It is complete and going out of bounds at the 42-yard line outside the right end who is tight this time as O'Connell gives to Carpenter. Takes to Carpenter and off to the left side goes Renfro with blockers in front of him to the 50. 45, 40 into Detroit territory at the 37-yard line. A beautiful fake that time. O'Connell the snap. Swinging out to the left this time is Carpenter. He cuts back sharply, brought down from behind at the 35-yard line. There is the gun. 
That's the end of the first quarter and the score. The Detroit Lions, 17. The Cleveland Browns, nothing. We get underway with the second period. The Browns up to the line of scrimmage. Pete Bruce to the left end is split. The Franker, Ray Renfro is out to the right. The handoff goes to the fullback, Jimmy Brown. He's at the 30, down to the 25. He's to the 20, the 15, the 10, the 5, and he's in for touchdown. Jimmy Brown leaves Detroit tacklers scattered all over the field. Carl Karalevich had a shot at him at the... Tommy O'Connell holding. There's the snapback from center. It's spotted. It's booted. It's good. And it's now a 17-7 football game. It was his 58-yard run which started them on the road to victory. Groza gets the whistle, moves up on the football. It's a low kick going down to about the four-yard line. It's taken by Larry's to the 10, the 15, to the 20, moves to his left at the 25, and goes down as he gets to about the 29 or the 30. Gail Larry, the former Texas A&M star from Fort Worth, Texas, is out to the right. Middleton out to the left. The left end junker split by about five yards. Road is going back to pass. He throws. It's good to Duran at the 25-yard line. Wrestled out of bounds by Kenny Conn's second down and eight yards to go for the Detroit Lions. Brian is the left end. Here it goes to Johnson. He's at the 30, the 35. He's at the 40. Cuts to his left. He's at the 45-yard line. Is hit and still on his feet and now is dropped at the 47. But it is now second down for Detroit. Ten yards to go. The ball on the Cleveland 41. Nine minutes left to play. Rope throws the quick one. Tracy has it at the 30. He's out of the 25. Tackled by Walter Michaels. That time Tobin Rope Sent about four receivers downfield. Tracy has been injured on the play. He was hit hard by Walter Michaels. A 16-yard pass play from Tobin Rote to Tom Tracy. Jim Martin trying another field goal. It's a fake. Rote is running with the ball. He throws a pass, and it's going to be for touchdown. Field goal. Jim Martin not trying for the extra point. The ball is spotted. It's booted. It's good. And the Detroit Lions now lead by a score of 24 to 7. Jim Martin getting set to kick off for the Detroit Lions. There's the kick. It's a good high one. Reynolds goes way back and goes out of the end zone. So it'll be a touchback. And the Browns will take over first and 10 on their own 20-yard line. Anchor out to the left. Tommy O'Connell at quarterback calling the signals. He takes. He's going back to pass. He throws. It's good to Brewster at the 35-yard line. Tackled immediately and pushed out of bounds. First and ten as the Browns move to the line of scrimmage. The handoff goes to Lou Carpenter. He gets the block from Robinson, but he is nailed and back to the line of scrimmage. Chad Hanulak into the football game. Hanulak at the running halfback position. And the Lions in their five-man line. The flip goes to Hanulak. He's going to throw the football. He throws. It is intercepted. Chad Hanulak trying to pass to Ray Renfro, but it was intercepted by Jim David. There's the snap back to Rhodes. He's back to pass. He gets protection. He throws. It's good to, to Junker. He has it at the 40. He's at the 35. Down to the 30. He fumbles. The ball is in the playing field. It is picked up by Don Paul down inside the 10 in Cleveland territory, and down he goes at the six-yard line. Papalon Cassidy, I believe, who who made the tackle of the left end, split way out. Zatkoff over there to cover him. O'Connell throwing over this way. It is intercepted by Terry Barn. It's going to be a touchdown. <laughs> Tommy O'Connell throwing from his end zone, intended for Pete Brewster at about the 18-yard line in Cleveland Territory. Picked off by the speedy Terry Barr, the former Michigan star, who raced down the near sideline. No one had a chance. When it comes to buying cars, I guess most people are looking for some way to get more for less. And surprising as it may seem, a simple comparison can show you just how to do that. Just compare Pontiac with cars in the low price class. You'll find no matter which way you look at it, style, performance, comfort, or value, the Pontiac Chieftain beats the best of the low price three and for less money. Now, Tobin Road holding at the 10-yard line. Jim Martin boots, and it's good. The point is good. The score is the Detroit Lions, 31, the Cleveland Browns, 7. The Browns have their work cut out for them if they hope to get back in this football game. They trail by a score of 31 to 7 with just a couple of minutes remaining in the first half. Martin kicking off. Jimmy Brown takes it in the end zone. He's to the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, the 30, the 35. Cuts to his left. He's at the 45-yard line to the 46, and there he's tackled. Up along Cassidy. 
making the tackle for the Detroit Lions. Renfro out to the right. Mel Plumman, the quarterback, draws at the 50, the 45. He cuts to his right and gets to the 40, the 36-yard line, where he is tackled by Terry Barr. Hands up there in a six-man line. The rush will be on this time. Plum back to pass. He gets protection. He throws. It is intercepted. Joe Smith, the Lion captain, has it down at the 19-yard line. He was tackled immediately by Preston Carpenter. Now let's pause 10 seconds for station identification. This is WGY, WGFM Schenectady. Root is set to hold the ball. It's spotted. It's booted. It is no good. It's off to the left. The 44-yard field goal try is no good, and the score remains 31-7. to That's the end of the first half. The score, the Detroit Lions 31, the Cleveland Browns 7. At Briggs Stadium in Detroit, Michigan, Ray Scott along with Bill McCaugan at halftime of the championship game of the National Football League between the Detroit Lions and the Cleveland Browns. We have some official statistics. First downs rushing for Detroit 7, the Browns 4. Passing the Lions 6, the Browns 3. By penalty, none. Total first downs, Detroit 13, the Browns 7. Yards gained rushing, the Lions 95, the Browns 89. Passing, Detroit 125, Cleveland 54. Yards lost, attempted passing, Detroit none, Cleveland 7. Total yards gained, that's net, 220 for the Lions, 143 for the Browns. The Lions have taken the year 14 times. Tobin Rudd has completed seven of them. The Browns have thrown 12 times, completed only four. And the Lions, and this has uh, been a big factor in the game thus far, have intercepted four of the Cleveland passes, two of Tommy O'Connell's, one of Chad Hanulak, and one of Mel Plum. The Lions have already received instructions from their coaching staff. They're all set to receive the kickoff for the third period. The Browns are still huddled around their head coach, Paul Brown, who undoubtedly... Had something to say to them at halftime in the locker room in an attempt to get back into this championship football game. The Browns are now moving out on the field, so here again with the play-by-play of the third period of this football game is Ray Scott. Right, Bill McCaugan. Kicking off will be Lou Groza. He comes up to the ball. His boot is high, fairly deep. Larry at the goal line. To the five up the middle, 10. 15 swings to the right, 20. 25-yard line, he's snowed under. Yale Larry, Tobin wrote under center. The snap. Looks, throws, Cassidy has it at the 34, rolls forward to the 35, fumble. Cleveland is on the ball. It was after the whistle, so ruled by the officials. 31 to 7 the score, the Lions on top. A high pass from center. Larry gets it. His boot is a high and a very deep one. Drives Reynolds back to the 19-yard line. Swings to the right, cut from behind at the 20. Cut from behind by John Gordy on second down, 10 from the 20. Plum under center. Pitches out to the right to Carpenter. He comes up to the line of scrimmage of the 25 to the 30. Swings to the 35 to the right sideline. 40, 45, and upended at the 48-yard line. Right, Renfro flanks outside the left end. Swinging out to the left side is Preston Carpenter. Gets away from two tackers. Is stormed under at the 49. Lou Carpenter. Double. It's a double wing now. Lou Carpenter comes out to the left, and O'Connell fades, or Plum fades the pass. It is complete to Carpenter at the 35, comes to the 32-yard line, and there he's upended. Preston Carpenter. Renfro flanks to the right. The ends are tight. Off to the right guard position goes Lou Carpenter across the 30 to the 28-yard line. After a fake first to the fullback up the middle. Milt Plum under center. The snap. Fake to two men, rolls out to the right, looking for a receiver. He's being chased. He throws. He has Carpenter at the 18, and he's down at the 16. Preston Carpenter, the right end. Went down, went out. Milt Plum rolled out to the right, spotted him. And Milt Plum, the snap. Swinging out to the left is Jimmy Brown. He has one blocker in front of him. He's being chased. He gets to the 15. He gets to the 10-yard line, swinging out to the left and out of bounds. Plum under center. The snap fades directly back to pass. He's looking. He throws out to the right to Carpenter. He has at the six. He's belted out of bounds at the five. Preston Carpenter. He ran for a yard outside the left end. First and goal at the five. Out to the left side comes Carpenter. Preston Carpenter. He cuts and he's into the end zone. 80 yards and 10 plays for the Browns as Groza with O'Connell holding will try for the extra point. The ball is down. The kick is in the air. It is good. The point is good. The score now, the Detroit Lions 31, the Cleveland Browns 14. It was Lou Carpenter, not Preston Carpenter. Lou wearing number 30, not Preston number 40, but he's into the end zone, and the Browns have that touchdown that they needed. 
Lou Groza preparing to kick off for the Browns with Gedman and Larry deep to receive as the Browns have started what uh, their followers hope will be a second half comeback. Groza comes to the ball. Fairly deep into the end zone. Larry, two yards deep, comes to the five, swings to the left, back to the right, 15, 20. Spins away from two tacklers, but is down at the 22. Cassidy flanks out to the left. Johnson, Gedman in the running back position. Rote throws deep. He's at... Doran's there. He has it at the 40, the 30, the 20, the 10. He's going all the way. 78 yards. The excellent protection set up for Tobin Rote, who first faked the pitch to the left, enabled him to get all the time that was necessary for Jim Doran to get behind the secondary and complete a 78-yard pass and run play. It took the Browns ten plays to get their TD. The Lions got it back in just one. Ray Scott. And we still have better than six minutes remaining in the third quarter. Jim Martin preparing to kick off for Detroit. In deep position are Billy Reynolds and Jimmy Brown for Cleveland. The kick is high, not very deep. Brown takes it at the 11. Comes to the 15, the 20, swings to the left to the 25, to the 28. The snap and Plum fades to pass. He's back up. He is hit. And down he goes at the 17. As that time the Detroit Lions used the strategy of shoot the gap with the linebackers. And along with Kraus and Maines, the linebackers were really in there and Plum never had a chance. Fourth down, 17 coming up for the Browns from their own 20-yard line. The Browns now in punt formation will have Kenny Collins kicking from the five. The pass from center, the punt. Fair catch by Larry at the 41-yard line of Detroit. The snap, fake to Johnson. Off to the left goes Gedman. Across the line of scrimmage and across the 45 to the 46. A pickup of four for Gedman. Four-man Cleveland line as Rote fades as if the pass runs up the middle. Swings out to the right. He is caught from behind, but not until he crosses the 40 to the 38-yard line. A penalty marker was dropped. 15 yards. Illegal use of hands. The snap and road again fades to pass. Right over the middle it is Junker at the 10-5. Touchdown! The score is 45 for Detroit. 14 for Cleveland. Martin comes to the ball. His boot sails off to the left. It is picked up. At the 10 to the 15 by Reynolds, 20, 25, swings to the left, swarmed under at the 29. John Gordy led the defensive charge along with Jim Martin, a five-man line for Detroit. The snap, off to the left comes Jimmy Brown to the 30, wrestles away from one man to the 35 and spins up to the 40. He picks up enough yardage for a first down at the Brown 40-yard line, although Preston Carper is with a couple of yards at right end. Plum fades to pass. He's back at his 30. He looks. He never gets the pass away. It has fallen on the 32-yard line. It is ruled not a pass, but a fumble. Jerry Perry. Dave Middleton is out to the right. The Lion line is tight. The handoff goes. Fakes to Hart. Rote going back to throw. He throws a long one, and it is another touchdown. 32-yard scoring play. In the first minute of play of the fourth period, Martin gets the whistle, moves up on the ball. It's a high kick. It's short this time. Reynolds takes it at the eight-yard line, straight ahead to the 10, the 15, the 20, the 25, and there he is hit on a jarring tackle. Plum of the ball. He gives to Lou Carpenter away from one man. He's at the 40, the 45, cuts back in, loses his footing as he does so. He is downed at the 47-yard line. Plum calls the signals. He fakes to one man. He's going back to pass. He gets away from a Lion defender. Now he runs for the ball. He's at the 50, the 45, to the 40 in Detroit territory. And he has wrestled to the ground at the 42. The Lions are up there right now in a seven-man line. The handoff to Carpenter. He finds an opening. He's down to the 30. And there he is hit and hit hard. The left end, Brewster, by about three. Plum of the ball. He flips to the fullback, Jimmy Brown. He's around the right side. He's at the 30, down to about the 28. And he is hit by Jack Christensen. Lou Carpenter to the left. Ray Renfro to the right. 
The Lions now are in a six-man line, and the rush is on, Mill Plum. He throws one right over the middle to Preston, uh, to Lou Carpenter, Preston Carpenter, rather, number 40. He gets inside the 25 to the 23, and there he's dropped, and the Lions take over. The Detroit team had the rush on that time. Plum did get the pass away over the middle. The game is being brought to you by High Grade, spelled H-Y-G-R-A-D-E. Cassidy is out to the right. The handoff goes to Gadman. Wide to the left. He's at the 25 to the 28, the 30-yard line. Vince Costello wrestles him to the ground there, along with a couple of other Browns. Flag on the play, however, and it is going to be a penalty against the Cleveland Browns. And now Jerry Rykow comes into the ball game. Tobin Roach goes out. Listen to the hand he gets. Jerry Rykow in there at quarterback. He hands off to Cassidy. He's at the 50, the 45, the 40, and he is dropped at the 35-yard line. Wrestled down there by four or five of the Browns was Don Paul, who made the initial stop. First and ten, and now the Lions are in good position to get that extra touchdown that their fans have been looking for. The signals he takes. Again, he hands to Cassidy on that same play, and Cassidy gets to about the 17-yard line. Jordan Dibble is the right end. The left hand split by about five yards. Rykow rolls to his right. He throws. There's a man there. Cassidy has it for a touchdown. It's spotted. It's booted. It's good. The point is good, and the score is now 59 to 14. The Detroit Lions are champions of the National Football League. The final score, the Detroit Lions 58, the Cleveland Browns 14. We'll be back in a moment for the final wrap-up of today's game. Well, ladies and gentlemen, the 1957 professional championship game is now history. A crowd of over 55,000 here at Briggs Stadium, Detroit, I believe at many points in today's game could not quite believe what they were seeing. A Detroit Lion team that has won the professional championship by a score of 59 to 14. This broadcast was produced by NBC sports editor Paul Jonas. <laughs>